said there'll be snow at Christmas. They said there'll be peace on earth. But instead it just kept on raining. A veil of tears for the virgin's birth. Hello there, welcome to my channel. My name is Doug and I'm back with another fountain pen review. And Merry Christmas to all of you that celebrate the day. I'm pleased that you could get away from all your Christmas activities. Go on. To have some quiet time with me and my pen. Today's pen is very Christmassy because it has gold. If you drop in by again, do pop in. And thanks a lot for the gold and frankincense. Uh, but don't worry too much about the myrrh next time, all right? Thank you. Sorry. Oh, you could aim me. And it's made in China, like most things under your tree. Oh, God. This review might just be a little controversial, as this pen is almost an exact copy of a very, very famous fountain pen. This is the Wingsong 629 Piston Filler, and it has a number 6 size 14 karat gold nib. I took one for the Inquiring Minds team by buying this pen, but I had to find out whether this number 6 size gold nib piston filling classic black and gold cigar shaped fountain pen without a snowflake on the cap was worth the $107 US asking price. Is the gold nib worth the extra money for an essentially standard Chinese Mont Blanc knockoff? Well, let's find out right now. <laughs> I'm afraid my unboxing video file got corrupted, so I'm going to recreate the unboxing. Just take all the cutting and crinkling as red. And here's the box. It has a white sleeve with the Wing Sung logo. See, they've registered it. Smarter than Mahjong. And Chinese and the logo. And it says it is a 629 14 karat gold medium. We slide the sleeve off and we have a nice bright royal blue box with this lovely pattern on it that looks like carbon fiber, not like vinyl or something with white stitching, the logos foil stamped and silver and it springs open and we find the pen and the little documentation inside a plush box very nice with the wing sung across the strap as well so the documentation in Chinese and the parts which come in very handy and filling instructions very nice and then there's the pen and it looks reminiscent of some other pen doesn't it and of course it has a 14 karat gold number six size nib. And what I'd like to do today is go over the parts and features of this pen, show some size comparisons, some measurements, and then provide a writing sample. And after the writing sample, please stay tuned as I'll talk about what I like and what I don't like so much about this fountain pen. Before we get to the parts and features of this pen though, I'd like to discuss the giant panda in the room for a moment, shall we? I'm hunting from the zoo. They want me to have a baby. I don't want to have a baby. Is this Wingsung 629 a knockoff or a clone of the Mont Blanc 146? David Parker did a video on knockoffs about a year ago, and he made up and defined three categories. The first was inspired by, and that was a pen that had some common elements to a well-known pen, but differentiated itself enough to stand on its own. Number two was knockoff, or a pen that has many common elements, but some things that are unique. Number three was clone, which is a pen trying its hardest to be a reproduction, incorporating virtually all of the design of the original. And I'm going to add a fourth category, because he did talk about it a bit, and that is fake, 
This is a pen that copies the original so completely as to fool you into thinking it's an original right down to the branding. David Parker felt that the Sailor 1911 Large was a pen inspired by the Mont Blanc 146 because although the Sailor looks similar to the classic 146, the Sailor is a cartridge converter pen instead of a piston filler, has a slightly different clip, and doesn't have the Mont Blanc snowflake on top. That's a fine analysis and I totally agree. However, he judged the Moonman T2 to be a knockoff of the Stipula Vontadu, even though it has a very unique spring plunger filling system and a very different clip. By his own definition, I'd say the T2 was inspired by the Vontadu as the unique filling system makes this T2 stand on its own. But Parker points to the $148 price gap between the T2 and the Vontadu as another reason that the Moon Man can be considered a clone, even though the price wasn't part of his original definition. Even though his inspired by example of the Sailor has a $200 price gap from the Mont Blanc 146. But applying those categories to this Wing Sung 629, there's no doubt in my mind that this is a knockoff of the Mont Blanc 146. It is visually very similar and is a piston filler. It has the same number of gold cap bands in the same size and shape. The clips are identical and they both have number six size 14 karat gold nibs. However, there are a few differences. The Wing Sung has a gold band at the top of the section and although the same thickness as the 146, unposted, the pen has the length of a 149 instead of a 146. This Wing Sung sells for $107 US where the Mont Blanc 146 retails for around $650, a price gap of $543. The real question is, is it worth the $107 to get this knockoff of the 146 because it has a gold nib and because it is well over $500 cheaper? Well, that's what we're going to find out. So let's look at this pen. Overall, it is a medium-sized cigar-shaped pen with gold metal hardware that is 147 millimeters in length. The pen is made from black precious resin, oh, sorry, semi-precious plastic, but is very well done actually, as there are no seams or gates anywhere on this pen that I've detected. From the top, we see a cigar-shaped finial separated from the cap by a gold metal band, which is the top part of the gold metal clip. And the clip is very springy and nicely usable. The cap tapers up to three gold metal cap bands. The wide center band is engraved in the same block letters filled with hash lines identical to the lettering on the Mont Blanc. And it says Wing Sung 629 and made in China. So if you can read that, you'll know this is not a Mont Blanc. The cap tapers down to a small step down to the barrel, which tapers up to a slight bulge in the middle and then down again to another gold metal band that separates the piston filler knob which tapers to the rounded end. And just below the cap threads there's an ink window that is about six millimeters in length. The cap unscrews with one full rotation to reveal a tapering black plastic section that ends in a flared gold metal ring. And we see the number six size 14 karat gold nib and black plastic feed. Let's look closer at this nib. The nib is stamped with some nice border scroll work and 1947, the year of Wing Sung's incorporation, not the height of China's Mount White. And then the Wing Sung logo followed by 14K, 585 for the gold content, and wing S. Then there's a letter M for medium, which is laser etched. The tipping material is probably applied to already stamped nibs, and I suspect that's why the size grade is laser etched afterwards. The nib and feet are friction fit and pull out easily for maintenance or replacement. Inside of the cap has a plastic cap liner that helps seal the nib from drying out. The ink window works very, very well. You can see I'm a little bit depleted of ink, so I can see right through there. 
and the piston works very very nicely very smooth and that piston goes all the way up to the bottom of the ink window and the tool I bought for the Wing Sung 699 piston filler and works with a number of pens works with this pen as well as you would expect the cap posts deeply and relatively securely though I find I have to give it a little bit of a twist to make sure it's secure as it has dropped off on me a few times. Unposted, the pen is plenty long enough to write with and the section is very, very comfortable and those cap threads are smooth and unobtrusive. I bought this pen from Mary's Stationery Store on AliExpress for $111.48 US or $140.89 Canadian. Ouch. There are also alternate versions of this pen available. There is a version of this pen exactly like this, only the ink window has the slits in it identical to the 146. And then there is a flat top and bottom finial version with the open ink window or the slitted ink window. Now let's look at some size comparisons. Here is the Wingsung 629 with a Wingsung 628, a Platinum President, a Wingsung 699, and a Pilot Falcon. Now let's look at them posted. And here they are posted. The Platinum President has an 18 karat gold nib, and I'm sad to say the Platinum has discontinued this model. This is a magnificent fountain pen, and if you're interested, you better step lively, as the existing stock is going fast. I know that Cult Pens, as of the posting of this video, still has some in stock. Don't forget to use the code in the description to get your 10% off. The Wingsung 628 came out about a year ago and sports a 14 karat gold nib, but it's number 5 size. And it's surprisingly a lot softer than the number 6 size 14 karat gold nib on the 629. And the 628 is a cartridge converter. The Pilot Falcon has a really unique looking nib as well as a unique writing experience. There's lots of spring in that nib. If you enjoy a very fine nib with lots of variation, check out the Pilot Falcon. Now let's look at some measurements and I'll be back with a writing sample. So I thought since I was cleaning the pen out anyway after the review, I don't think I'll keep this pen inked, I thought I'd show how to disassemble the pen completely with that Wingsung wrench. This is uh, sold as a wrench for the Wingsung 699, but it works on a number of pens, including the uh, Narwhal and a Tianzi piston filler as well. Who knows what else it'll fit. So, the first thing to do is to pull the nib. I mentioned that this was friction fit and so I'm just going to take a Kleenex, hold it by the shoulders just like that, and push my knuckles together and pull it out. But this is an opportunity to show you the nib in its entirety. As a, it seems to be number 0152. It has these interesting lots in it and here's the feed nothing spectacular about the feed now that we have those free we need to pull the piston out so what I've done with other piston fillers is extend the piston knob completely put the wrench on the pen until you feel where the flat sides are and then tighten the piston down not extremely tight, but just tight enough so that it holds it in place. And then you can rotate the barrel against that. And, of course, it runs opposite, righty-loosey, lefty-tighty. And we see that it unscrews fairly easily. And then we can pull out the piston. And there's the barrel. And you can silicone grease that piston there. Uh, rinse out the barrel to get all the ink out if you're changing inks. Use a Q-tip, whatever. Then I'm going to 
push the whole assembly back in. Now this will come apart further than this, but I've found that fiddling with pistons uh, takes up too much of my life. So as much as I can keep this assembly together, then I know that it's going to travel the right distance when it's in the pen. And then we just turn the barrel the opposite way until we're tight, not too tight to break it. And then we can loosen the piston a little bit and then close the piston down. Then we fit our nib and feed together. The edges of that feed right where the shoulders of the nib line up, hold the whole thing together. There's no key on this, so it goes in in any direction. And again, we're going to push on the shoulders of this nib, so I'm going to use a little rubber matting. I'm just going to push on the shoulders of that nib to force the nib and feed in. And once it's all the way in, we're going to check its alignment, to make sure that that feed is dead centered down the center of the slit. Gold nib, a nice polish, et voila. And we're back with the writing portion of the review. This is Clairefontaine 90 GSM paper. And this is the Wingsung six to nine. And it has a fine 14 karat gold number six size then let's check the wetness this pen is decently wet and the ink today is my favorite black ink Roshizuku Takesume and here are some close matches to this ink from inkswatch.com. This nib is smooth, gives a very thin line with a good deal of feedback. And for a 14 karat gold nib, it gives very little line variation. It gives some if you push it, but that nib is very stiff can't even be called bouncy at all do you want to come back to my place bouncy bouncy i'm surprised by this because i fully expected this 14 karat gold number six size nib to be even springier than the number five size gold nib on the 628 here's the 628 it has a number five size 14 karat gold nib. It's even toothier. Oh, yeah. Uh, I'm sorry? And more feedback than the 629, but it has a good deal more flex to it, more bounce. As you can see. But this line. And the 629 produces is 0.4 millimeters in thickness, uh, which makes it a Western extra fine or a Japanese fine. And for our quote. So, what do I like and what do I not like about this fountain pen? I have to keep reminding myself of two things when I write with this pen. One, I bought it for the review, otherwise I would not have bought it. And number two, I paid $149 Canadian for this pen. If I forget and just write with this pen, thinking, oh, this is a wing song, I think to myself, meh, not too bad. It writes well, it lays down some good ink, it's a piston filler, very nice. It feels comfortable in the hand to write with, even though the line is much finer and has more feedback than I usually like. It's a nice pen. Then I remember this is a 14 karat gold nib pen 
that I paid $149 for, and I'm just a little bit mad about it. Oh, it makes me mad. <laughs> Is this pen worth $149 Canadian? Not on your poutine eating, moose hunting, hockey playing life. Know the difference between a good and a bad poutine. Little boy, what seems to be the matter? My poutine gravy wasn't hot enough to melt my cheese curds. Oh my god. I swear on the ghost of John A. McDonald that we are going to find out who did this to you, and when we do, we are going to file a formal complaint. Then I remind myself I'm providing a valuable service with my sacrifice. Concord. Message for you, sir. So don't buy this pen, folks. There are so many better choices for this amount of money. And let's look at a few. Brian Goulet did a really nice video a few years back on his top five entry-level gold nib fountain pens, and he added a sixth honorable mention. I agree with his list, which was this, and I'll put them in order of Goulet U.S. Pricing, the Pilot E95S at $136, the Pilot Vanishing Point at $156, the Pilot 74 at $160, the Pilot Falcon at 180 the Lamy 2000 at 199.20 and the platinum 3776 at 280 dollars Yes, the Wingsong 629 is about $30 less expensive than the Pilot E95S, but I would argue you can go $80 even cheaper and get a Wingsong 699 piston or vacuum filler. Uh, this one writes like a dream compared to this 629. Yes, steel nib. And what do you need gold for anyway? There are a number of qualities that people love in gold nibs. Let's look at some of those qualities. Number one, gold nibs, flex, and bounce. Not necessarily. Here is my Opus 88 Bella. It has a steel number six size Yovo nib and watch this look at that that's not a lot of pressure I haven't had this pen open in a while that's not a lot of pressure but look at that line variation that's very soft and springy steel now here is my platinum President. And it has an 18 karat gold nib. You really have to push it. This nib is stiff. It's not uncomfortable. It's not unpleasant. I love this pen, but don't think that it's going to be soft and springy because it ain't. So bang goes that argument. And my nib specialist, Jack Hernandez, says it's the shape of the nib that has more to do with its bounce or its flex than the material. Number two, gold nibs will not corrode like steel. But riddle me this. How long are you going to keep your inexpensive knockoff wing song around before you get the real thing? And number three, 
gold nibs are just more beautiful than steel. And they have a better luster than steel or even steel with gold plate. Now this is true. Gold shines up better and it's prettier in my view. So you can proudly display your bargain basement Chinese knockoff of a Mont Blanc and impress your friends with how pretty that gold nib is. I kind of doubt your friends will be impressed. First, they probably don't even know what a fountain pen is. And even if they do know what a fountain pen is, they won't be impressed by your 14 karat gold Chinese knockoff. So for me, it comes down to how does gold improve the writing experience? In this case, it doesn't improve the pen at all. And a steel nib here would be just as good, if not better. And secondly, if it's longevity, beautiful gold luster, and brilliant writing that you're after, look no further than any pen on Brian's list. Well, except the Lamy 2000. But if you're like me and enjoy a beautiful looking and writing pen, then there are plenty of steel nibbed options that give you way more bang for your buck than the Wingsung 629. For example, I can get this steel nibbed Leonardo Ferrore Galaxy for $130 US after a 15% discount for just reviewing my previous purchase. This Ferrore Galaxy is three times the pen that this Wingsung 629 is. No contest. I have to thank those of you who have reached out and supported me by becoming members of my channel. Seriously, your support allowed me to go ahead and make this purchase. And so this review is because of you. Thank you. And there you have it. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. And don't forget to ring that bell to get instant notifications whenever a new video is posted. And don't forget that you can join as a member of my channel for only 99 cents a month. And I guarantee I will answer your comments in the comment section. And you get cool emojis and badges too. And that just leaves it for me to say... Thank you... For watching... And that's all she wrote. I made this.